Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Iridium Jazz Club here in New York City. Saxophonist TK Blue tonight is playing selections off his debut Motema Records release, Latin Bird, which is a stirring tribute to the iconic alto saxophonist Charlie Yardbird Parker. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about the brand new CD, why he chose to do a tribute to Parker, as well as his famous 30 year stint as music director with the legendary Randy Weston. <laughs> project because you're paying tribute to one of the icons of the alto saxophone, Mr. Charlie Parker. No doubt. And uh, thank God for Jimmy Heath, one of my teachers, because uh, when I met Jimmy, he's the one who really turned me on to Charlie Parker. I was mostly into John Coltrane playing soprano saxophone. And when I met Jimmy, he said, you know, you, you need to check out the folks who came before Coltrane. I said, like who? He said, like Bird. I said, well, who is Bird? And he took me under his wing and played some of Charlie Parker's music. And I fell in love with the, the music and the concept. And I immediately got an alto saxophone and started studying uh, the whole tradition of bebop. This album takes everybody through a whole musical caravan. We go through Calypso, we go through Latin. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then we go to New Orleans jazz, the early, I mean, how did you decide to put all of these concepts of jazz and world rhythms into a modern jazz record? Well, it's part of my uh, cultural background because uh, I'm an African-American, uh, you know, born in New York, raised in Long Island, but my parents come from the, the Caribbean. My mother's from Trinidad, my father's from Jamaica. So I've always been exposed to music outside of the United States. I grew up listening to R&B and Motown. And then, of course, you know, I segued and got into uh, listening to jazz. But uh, I always had a lot of uh, world influence in my experience as far as music. You know, African music, uh, Afro-Cuban music, uh, music from South America, Brazil, especially uh, Trinidad, Calypso, uh, Steel Pan, uh, Reggae, because my father's from Jamaica. So I've always had all of those kind of influences. So it was just kind of natural for me to, to uh, have that kind of vibe and uh, mix that kind of uh, ryth rhythmic concept in, in what I'm doing musically. There were a lot of songs that you had to choose from and you narrowed it down to two originals from you and then there are eight compositions played or made famous by, by Charlie Parker. Mm -hmm. Donna Lee is one to stick out on this. You go a whole lot of places with that one. Mm. Yeah, Donna Lee, we start off with, uh, with the Brazilian samba rhythm. I'm very, very uh, interested and very attracted to Brazilian music. Uh, Milton Nascimento, Djavan, uh, Gilberto Gil. I've just been uh, so 
crazy about that music. And uh, so we start that off with a samba, and then we do a little waltz thing in the middle, and then we end up with the samba. So it's kind of like a, the samba as is like bookends for the for the composition. You also touched upon one of my all-time favorite ballads by the wonderful Thelonious Monk. You do Round Midnight. You went home on that one. Yeah, that was, uh, uh, you know, it's funny, man. I've recorded Round Midnight several times, and it never made it on the record for one reason or another. And so this time I said, now that I have control over the project, I said, I'm going to make sure it's on the record this time because that's one of my favorite ballads. coming from traditional jazz background what was it about Charlie Parker that brought the whole world on its knees as far as his musicianship and what he brought to the horn and what he brought musically to just musicians all over the world well well the thing my, my take on, on why bird was so uh, appealing and, and, and innovative besides his virtuosic technique I mean that goes without saying he, he knew the instrument inside out but beyond that was his emotional content and the fact that he was steeped in the blues if you notice on, on my recording a lot of the tunes that we re that we did are actually blueses I, I rearranged them uh, and and in the solo section on some so that it doesn't appear to really be a blues but in fact it is a blues and a lot of his music he wrote a tremendous amount of music based on the blues progression and and the blues is is the is, is such a basic music of emotional feeling and content everybody feels the blues and when you play the blues you, you know you you really touch the heart and soul of folks and i think that's what really made birds so attractive to so many people you know and it goes back to louis armstrong and even duke ellington they had the blues you can hear it in a lot of the 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 architects of jazz music no doubt no doubt the blues is you wouldn't have jazz without the blues and you know an interesting thing is you know i did a recording uh, with randy weston who was here tonight in uh, uh one of the great giants of jazz who i play with and on the recording he had johnny copeland and johnny was a great blues player and uh we did a performance in chicago where johnny couldn't make it so there was a guy named lockwood a uh, blues player who came to play with us and it's really interesting so he said to me young man what kind of blues are you guys doing so I, I said well we're doing uh, uh, old-fashioned blues like Count Basie he said no that's modern blues and then I said oh okay and then he said to me he said young man you know the difference between blues and jazz I said well that's a tough question because uh, I assume that blues is part of jazz, and you wouldn't have jazz without the blues tradition. He says, he says to me, when you take the bridge out of a song, you have the blues. When you put the bridge in a song, you have jazz. And man, that stuck with me, you know. And so I started thinking about tunes, you know, like Misty and different standards, and they have a bridge. And he said, you take the bridge out, you can make a blues out of that song. And I said, I guess this, this guy had something to that, you know. But the blues is such a, 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 a music of deep feeling and emotional content that um, I just felt it would be a great springboard for me to u use uh, uh, to, to put this project together on Charlie Parker. Uh, 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 uh. 
Another beautiful standout track is a tribute to one of your friends, Mr. Benny Powell, who who made his transition. That had to be very, very hard for you before going into this project. It was because, as you know, Benny was slated to record with me on this record, and uh, we spoke days before uh, he was uh, after he got out the hospital. Well, not I'm, excuse, I'm sorry, after his operation, we spoke, and and actually, I was the last person he called. Um, on a Friday, I spoke to him, and then he passed that Saturday. And it was very difficult for me. Um, Benny was like my father, and uh, we were very, very close. We, we talked every day. Um, I, I can't put into words the, the loss that I felt uh, about him passing, especially um, the way he died, you know, uh, uh, just not, not being taken care of properly in, in the hospital, you know. So... Um, it was very hard for me, and I and I felt necessary to just play about it and to help to get the emotion out, and that's why I came up with uh, "He Flew Away Too Soon." You have had a wonderful career, and one of your most important partnerships is with Randy West, and you've been his music director for almost thirty, well, over thirty years now, and um, he's been also like a father to you. Mm -hmm. Tell me how you guys met and. What is it like working with that, that, I call it the quiet giant? Yeah, Randy, actually, he was here tonight as well. And Randy, uh, um, we met uh, in the late 70s when I was working with Abdullah Ibrahim from South Africa, the pianist. And uh, we were working at the, Arnett Coleman had a loft called the Artist House in uh, Soho. We were doing a concert there, and Randy brought his father. And... Uh, I was so happy to meet him, but actually I have to take that back. I actually heard him play first years before that at the East in Brooklyn. It was the first time I heard him. I wasn't familiar with his music, but I was really knocked out the way he performed with his son on as the dean was playing kung, because they were playing in duo. And then later he met me working with Abdullah. And then later on in 1980, um, I asked him, could I sit in? He was working at a club in New York called Syncopation, and he said, no problem, and we hit it off. And coincidentally, he was living in France at the time, and I moved to Paris in 1981. I spent about 10 years there. So uh, when I moved to Paris, I contacted him, and, and we rekindled uh, our friendship as far as working, and he started calling me for gigs, and it's uh, just been nonstop ever since. <laughs> What's it like recording and playing with him? What are some of the things that you've learned, and how has he enhanced your playing style? Well, his spirit, you know, he, he, you know, he doesn't tell you what to do musically, but but you feel the spirit, spirituality of his music, and you feel what is necessary to do and how to play. I mean, of course, you have to be proficient on your instrument, uh, but at the same time, uh, his awareness and the way he he. Uh, the way he gets you into a song is by telling you about the piece. He doesn't describe a song, okay, we're going to do this tune, and it's an A minor, and the bridges goes to G. It's not about the notes, it's not chords. It's about, we're doing a tune called Tangier Bay. The sun is rising over the bay in Tangier, and the people are just getting together and going into the market. He's giving you visual cues uh, as to what this piece is about. And all his music is deeply spiritual and that has affected me profoundly. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Iridium here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank TK Blue for his time as well as the staff and management here at the Iridium. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. Mm -hmm.